فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ويا إن كتاب ثلاثة الأصول written by شيخ الإسلام محمد ابن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله we stopped at where the author said وقال البخاري رحمه الله تعالى باب العلم قبل القول والعمل والدليل قوله تعالى فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك فبدأ بالعلم قبل القول والعمل الإمام البخاري is Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn Mughira ibn Bardizba al-Bukhari rahimahullah and he is from the six great books of hadith in which we read rather his book is the most authentic book after the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his book is the book known as As-Sahih al-Bukhari. In that book of his, he chaptered a chapter which he called Kitab al-Ilm, the chapter or the book of knowledge. And within that kitab, within that book, he placed a chapter which he called Babun. العلم قبل القول والعمل. so that's how we read it. read it as باب بالتنوين with a تنوين. so we say باب. why do we read it as باب؟ the reason is because لأنه مقطوع عن الإضافة. because it's detached from the إضافة. And that's a grammatical analysis of the word babun. Well, ilm, the author goes on saying babun and al ilm. He says al ilm. Grammatically, the word ilm is a mubtada. Qabla al qawli is khabar al mubtada. It is the khabar of al ilm. This statement, al-ilm knowledge, qabla al-qawli, it is before speech, wal-amali and action. Imam al-Bukhari is trying to show us or to explain to us, in the eyes of the Sharia, la i'tibar lahu, there's no consideration to any speech or action unless it is established on knowledge illa ila kana qa'iman ala al-ilmi unless it is established upon knowledge in simple terms knowledge is a prerequisite for speech and action fal-ilmu shartun li sihhati al-qawli wal-amal Knowledge is a prerequisite for speech and action. Then the author says, وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى But what we know is, if we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Al-Imam al-Bukhari doesn't say وَالدَّلِيلُ Al-Imam al-Bukhari doesn't say that. Rather, الإمام البخاري says لقول الله تعالى 
and he doesn't use what dalilu qawluhu ta'ala. He says, li qawlillahi ta'ala, based on the speech of Allah. Whereas in this book, Thalathat al-Usul, written by Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab, he placed the word wad dalilu. And the reason why he used wad dalilu instead of li qawlillahi ta'ala, which both mean the same, is لِيَكُونَ أَوْضَحْ So it can become more clear for the person who's reading and that they can understand what Imam al-Bukhari meant by لِقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And then Imam al-Bukhari used as an evidence for his statement of الْعِلْمُ قَبْلَ الْقَوْلِ وَالْعَمَلِ He used an evidence based on the statement of Allah in Surah Muhammad, Ayah 19. فَعَلَمْ نَوْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ نَوْ This speech, no, is a khitab للرسول. Allah is addressing the messenger. Allah is telling the Prophet of his to have knowledge, is to know. But even that though the Prophet is being speak, spoken to here, it encompasses the whole Ummah. وَيَشْمَلُ الْأُمَّةِ This encompasses all of us. The thing that the Prophet is being addressed with is knowledge. And to have knowledge. The same is for every single one of us. So Allah says to the Prophet, فَعْلَمْ نَوْ مُحَمَّدِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ what is it that Allah wants him to know? أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah goes on to say in وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ And ask forgiveness for your shortcomings and your sins. That's actions. So فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ is knowledge. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ لَهُ is action. So knowledge came before action. Al-Imam al-Bukhari wasn't the first person to use this as an evidence. The person who preceded him in this is... Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimahullah, who is an imam min a'immati al-kibar. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimahullah. An imam, Abu Nu'ayma al-Asbahani, who brought it in his book, Hilyatul Awliya wa Tabaqatul Asfiya. And Sufyan ibn Uyayna, from Sufyan ibn Uyayna, that he was asked, annahu su'ila an fadl al-ilm. He was asked, about the virtue of knowledge. Faqala and he responded by saying, Alam tasma, have you not heard? Qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah, Hina bada bihi, when he started with knowledge. Faqala, Allah said, Fa'alam know, annahu la ilaha illallah. Know that there is none worthy of worship Except Allah. ثُمَّ أَمَرَهُ بِالْعَمَلِ بَعْدَ ذلك. And Allah commanded action after that. فَقَالَ He said, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ Ask forgiveness for your shortcomings. So what we take from this is, this speech of an Imam al-Bukhari, رحمه الله, is the virtue of knowledge. And that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala started with knowledge. And that Allah commanded his messenger to have and gain knowledge. Before he comes with any action. Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim al jawziyah has a powerful poetry. In his noble book, Al-Kafiyatul Shafiyah, 
في الانتصار للفرقة الناجية. He says the following: والجهل داء قاتل وشفاؤه أمران في التركيب متفقان نص من القرآن أو من سنة وطبيب ذاك العالم الرباني ابن القيم سيس والجهل إغنورنس is داء قاتل is a dangerous illness an illness that can kill وشفاؤه and the cure of ignorance is أمراني two things في التركيب متفقاني two things that are compounded both of them together The first is نص من القرآن أو من سنة So he's telling us here Do you want to get rid of ignorance? What is it that you can come with that will remove ignorance from you? The Sheikh says نص من القرآن أو من سنة A text from the Quran Or the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what cures you from ignorance. وَطَبِيبُ ذَاكَ الْعَالِمُ الرَّبَّانِ Who is the one who is now going to guide you to the Quran and the sunnah? وَطَبِيبُ the doctor for this is الْعَالِمُ الرَّبَّانِ The true godly scholar. In other words, it's not every single person who is the doctor you can trust to take this illness from you. Pay attention. Illness, ignorance is an illness. It's a contagious illness and it's, it's a severe illness, an illness that can kill you. To get rid of it, you need textual evidences, the kitab and the sunnah. But because you have this illness, you knowing the cures is not enough. You know why? Because you need somebody to prescribe it for you. And the doctor for you to, to prescribe it for you is وَطَبِيبُ ذَاكَ الْعَالِمُ الرَّبَّانِ It is the scholar. It is not everybody who attributes knowledge to himself. Rather, هو الْعَالِمُ الرَّبَّانِ The true godly scholar. The ones who Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala described them in Surah Al Imran, Ayah 79. ولكن كونوا ربانيين بما كنتم تعلمون الكتاب وبما كنتم تدرسون Now Ibn al-Qayyim goes on to the next line of poetry and describes to us what knowledge in the kitab and the sunnah is he referring to What knowledge is that is it that we have to hasten to to remove this illness from us He says, علم بأوصاف الإله وفعله وكذلك الأسماء للديان It is the knowledge of what? بأوصاف الإله Allah تبارك وتعالى's names and attributes Allah تبارك وتعالى's ربوبية Allah تبارك وتعالى's ألوهية Those are the three he mentions. Ilmun bi awsafi ilahi wa fi'lihi. Knowledge of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. His descriptions. Tawhidul asma'i wa sifat enters there. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's rububiyya. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's uluhiyya. Wa kadhalika al asma'i liddayyani. The Sheikh then goes on to saying, وَالْأَمْرُ وَالنَّهْيُ الَّذِي هُوَ دِينُهُ Ibn Al-Qayyim goes on to saying, the second type of knowledge that the person needs, it is fiqh, 
Al-amru wa Allah commands you to know that. When nahyu and the knowledge of what Allah has prohibited you from subhanahu wa ta'ala alladhi huwa dinuhu the commands of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in the religion the prohibitions of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in the religion in other words the ahkam of halal and haram in which we are commanded to come with and that which we are commanded to leave off that's the second type of knowledge that the person needs. What about the third thing that Ibn al-Qayyim mentions? The third knowledge that a person needs is وَجَزَاؤُهُ يَوْمَ الْمِعَادِ الثَّانِ And also the knowledge of بِمَا يَكُونُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The knowledge of what's going to be at the Day of Judgment. What is going to take place that day, and etc. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah mentions three things: علمٌ بأوصاف الإله وفعله، وكذلك الأسماء للديان، والأمر والنهي الذي هو دينه، وجزاؤه يوم المعاد الثاني. Ibn Al-Qayyim mentions it there. It is knowledge of التوحيد الربوبية. And the Tawheed Al-Uluhiyya And the Tawheed Al-Asma'i Wal-Sifat That's the first knowledge And the second is Wal-Amru Wal-Nahyu Al-Ladhi Huwa Deenuhu Knowing the Ahkam of the Halal and the Haram And the third is Wajazauhu Yawm Al-Mi'ad Al-Thani And also learning about The things that are going to take place the Day of Judgment Then Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullahu ta'ala rahmatan wasi'a he moves on to the second muqaddimah we have now walillahi alhamd wal minnah praises to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala exalted is he we have finished the first muqaddimah the first introduction now the author moves on swiftly to the second muqaddimah and he starts by saying I'lam no rahimakallahu may Allah have mercy upon you and as we have spoken about previously this is a dua from the author rahimahullah and it shows how eager he is, Rahimahullah, and how much he wants, Rahimahullah, to benefit each and every one of us. And that's the status and the act of the people of knowledge, that they make dua for the people which they are teaching and the people who they are educating. The Sheikh goes on to say in Annahu Yajibu I'lam have knowledge Rahimakallahu may Allah have mercy upon you Annahu Yajibu that it's obligatory Ala kulli Muslim in every Muslim Wa Muslimatin and every female Muslim Ta'allumu learning هذه المسائل الثلاثي Learning these three مسائل These three issues والعمل بهن And to implement them So the Sheikh رحمه الله After the four مسائل which he's already told us before He's telling us Three other masail which we need to know. And not only do we need to know, but we also need to implement. And it is obligatory, as he says, Ala kulli Muslimin wa Muslimatin. It is obligatory on every believing man 
and it is obligatory on every believing woman. So it is not specific to the men, nor is it specific to the female. And why is it obligatory on the men and the women to know this? Because Aslu deen the foundation of the religion, Waqa'ida to deen and the principles of the religion is what the Shaykh Rahimallah is going to mention. So it's obligatory for you to know it. Al Ula, the first of them, is Anna Allah Khalaqana Warazakana Walam Yatrukna Hamala Bel Arsala Ilayna Rasula Faman Atahu Dakhal al Jannah Waman Asahu Dakhal al Nar Wad Dalilu Kauluhu Taala إنا أرسلنا إليكم رسولا شاهدا عليكم كما أرسلنا إلى فرعون رسولا فعصى فرعون الرسول فأخذناه أخذا وبيلا The first of the four is that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala had created the creation. The first point that you need to know is Anna Allah khalaqana wa razaqana. Allah is the one who is the one who created us. As he said in the Quran, Wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal insa. إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create jinn, no ins, except to worship me. And so Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah also says, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ Allah is the one who created everything. Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. Everything Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala created. So that's the evidence to prove that Allah created us. Walam yatrukana hamala. And Allah has not left us. After he created us aimlessly. Without a purpose. No. Rather, بَلْ إِنَّمَا خَلَقَ الْخَلْقَ لِغَايَةٍ Rather, Allah created the creation for a purpose. For, a, for an aim. An objective. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْزَنُ عَمَلًا the one who created death and life. Why did he do that? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ So he can test you. Test you for what reason? أَيُّكُمْ Which of you is أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا The best of actions. So it's a, it's a matter of actions. It's a matter of accumulating righteous deeds. Allah also says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ayah 115, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Did you assume, did you think to yourself, أَنَّمَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ That we created you عَبَثًا aimlessly no purpose behind your creation for a joke is that why you think we created you abathan here means that there's no ultimate goal behind why i created you you think i created you with no wisdom behind it 
وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ And did you think to yourself that you're not going to come back to me? Did you think there's not going to be a resurrection? So the answer to this is what? فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ Allah is exalted. Allah wa ta'ala is high to create a creation without a purpose and without a goal. So as we mentioned, Allah wa ta'ala created us for a purpose. And what is the purpose in which he created us for? Allah mentions it to us in Surah al dhariyat Ayah 56 to Ayah 58. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create jinn, nor did I create the ins, except to worship me alone. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ I do not want from them مِنْ رِزْقٍ I do not want provision from them. وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ and I do not want for them to provide for me. In Allah, verily Allah, huwa al-razzaq dhu al-quwwati al-mateen. Verily Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the one who provides subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> so the question that arises here is, and the question that one needs to ask is, where am I in regards to the purpose in which I was created for? Am I fulfilling the purpose I was brought to this world? Or am I busying myself with secondary things? Things in which I'm not created for. Things that are meant to serve the purpose in which I was created for. Eating, drinking, making money, all of those are meant to serve the ultimate purpose in which you were created for, which is ibadatullahi wahda. You eat so you can worship Allah wa ta'ala alone. You make money and you work so you can worship Allah alone. You have children so you can worship Allah alone. Every single thing, the purpose behind it, is to fulfill the purpose of ubudiyah, ibadatullahi wahda, worshipping Allah tabarak wa ta'ala alone. There's an ayah which I want to stand over. Because the atheists are of two types, mainly. Those who disregard Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in totality and they negate him. And they say, there is no such a thing as a god. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he asks them a question. He says to them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ This is in Surah Al-Tur, Ayah 35. Allah says to them, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ Were they created from nothing? Am humul khaliqun or are they the creators? So this ayah, the scholars they say that it is ayah aqliyun. It's a rational verse that rationally speaks to you. The ayah is trying to tell you that there is a creator. Annahu la buddha min khaliqin. That there is a creator. And that this universe hasn't come sudfa by coincidence. It didn't come randomly. The reason is because a rational mind places three options in front of you. Not four, but three. Number one is we are either created without a creator and that is impossible. The reason is because the creation has the act of creating has to be connected to a creator like movement 
is connected to the one who's doing the moving. So there's nothing that can move unless there is a muharrik in something that's moving it. <laughs> and that is amrun daruriyun. That's something known out of necessity. So to think to yourself that we are created without a creator is being irrational. Even a truly stubborn person, stubborn person who doesn't want to believe in a God knows this. Knows what? That every action has to have a dua. And they can never prove to you, and they can never prove to you something that ever happened, that happened without a person or something doing it. But this universe and this creation that are so sophisticated, ran, it came random and there's no creator for it. Show me something basit, something very simple. That happened without a dua. How is it that you want to convince me the most sophisticated thing, this creation of this universe and these human beings have come without a creator? The second point that the ayah brings forward from the three is that we created ourselves. <coughs> That we created ourselves. And that is more corrupt rationally than the previous one. The previous point. Because we are ma'dumun. We didn't exist. How is it possible that we are able to to bring ourselves into existence. Because Adam, something that does not exist, is a, is a deficiency. And creating is completeness. <coughs> so how can deficiency be complete? <coughs> so then we're left with the third option which is that there has to be a khaliq a creator one who is able one who can create and that is the only option that rationally makes sense Unless Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala blindens a person's verse. Well, this verse, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqun is a verse that touched a noble companion by the name of Jubayr ibn Mut'im radiyallahu ta'ala anhu as it's narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari. He came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And he was from the captives of the battle of Badr. He was from the people who the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa took as captives from the battle of Badr. And the prophet was re reading in Salatul Maghrib, Surah al -Tur. And so the prophet came across this verse, ayah 35. Where Jubayrun yasma' Jubayr was listening. Jubair described how he felt when he heard this voice, verse. When he heard this ver verse, the way he felt, he explained it. He said, Kada qalbi an yatira. My heart was close to flying out of my chest. الوقت, and from that day onwards, waqara al imanu fi qalbi, the iman settled into my heart. 
The reason is because لأنه من أهل الفصاحة والبلاغة He was a man of eloquence A man who knew the language He understood the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم What he was reading The Quran and how powerful it was So he understood the verse And the meaning that was in it And that which he indicated فوقر الإيمان في قلبه And the Iman just entered into his heart وَرَزَقَنَا And that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala create Allah provides for us Subhanahu wa Ta'ala And this is connected to Tawheed al-Rububiyyah There are many verses in the Quran that prove that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala provides for us Such as قوله تعالى وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُعَدُونَ Surah Al-Dhariyat Ayah 22 and in the sky is your rizq وَمَا تُعَدُونَ And that which you have been promised In Surah Al-Dariyat, Ayah 58, Allah says إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ That verily Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is the one who provides One who is strong Also Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Imran Ayah 37 إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He provides مَنْ يَشَاءُ Whoever He wills بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Without any accountability So there are many verses in the Quran In this regard The rizq is of two types. A rizq which is khas and a rizq which is aam. <coughs> the rizq which is khas, it is the rizq which is halal, which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala made for the believers. It is the rizq which is nafi', beneficial. It is the risk لا تبعة فيه إذا كان عونا على طاعة الله تعالى قال الله تعالى It is the risk that the slave will not be questioned about and nothing will be held against him if it's in accordance to Allah's obedience subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah says in the Quran قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ قُلْ هي للذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا خالصة يوم القيامة. الله says in سورة الأعراف آية 32 قل سيدنا محمد من حرم زينة الله who is the one who prohibits زينة الله the beauty of Allah التي أخرج لعباده that which Allah has brought out for his creation والطيبات من الرزق and the good of the رزق قل سيدنا محمد here it is for للذين آمنوا those who have belief and faith the believers the مؤمنين في الحياة الدنيا it is for them in this world خالصة يوم القيامة purely for them the day of judgment so that one is the rizq which is khas as for the rizq which is عام is whatever will give you strength and power whether it's halal or haram it doesn't matter 
it does not matter the one who's given if he's a believer or a disbeliever. Basically, it is the one Allah says in Surah, to, Surah to Hud, Ayah 6. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا That there is no riding beast on this, in this earth except its provision is on Allah. So the disbeliever falls under that as well. وَلَمْ يَتْرُكْنَا هَمَلًا And Allah has not left us aimlessly without a purpose. This is the third point. This word that the Sheikh used, which is hamala, and of course we have to say hamala bi tahriq, not be, with not with a taskin, has to be with a haraka, not a sukun. It is a suda al matruk layla wa nahara. It is something that's left uh, without any goal or aim or goal behind it but the usage of this word hamalan lam yaridil lafz the wording has not come fil quran al karim in the quran rather what has been used in the quran is suda and abath but they all mean the same hamal suda and abath يَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى يَوْمُ سُورَةُ الْقِيَامَةِ آية 36 The word suda has been used here. أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ And here, Surah Al-Mu'minun, آية 115, the word عَبَث is used. Rather, what has Allah done? Bal rather, arsala ilayna rasoolan. Rather, Allah has sent unto us a messenger. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he sent unto us a messenger. Faman ata'ahu, anyone who obeys that messenger, dakhal al-jannah will enter paradise. Waman asahu, and anyone who disobeys him, dakhal al-nara, he will enter the hellfire. So whoever obeys the messenger alayhi salatu wassalam and follows him, he will enter Jannah. And anyone who disobeys the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam will enter the hellfire. So the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sent to all mankind. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah to Saba, Ayah 28 وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا Allah says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ I have not sent you إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ I have sent you to all of mankind بَشِيرًا with glad tidings وَنَذِيرًا and a warner So the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام came as a warner and every single nation, a messenger was sent to them or a prophet was sent to them. As Allah said in Surah Fatir, Ayah 24, Every single nation, there was a warner that was sent to them to warn them. To warn them of what? Man Allah, anyone who, who disobeys Allah that he will enter the hellfire. And to give them glad tidings of what? Whoever obeys the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will enter Jannah, paradise. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الْبُخَارِيُّ narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كُلُّ أُمَّتِي يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَى Everybody from my ummah will enter Jannah except the one who refuses. Qalu, Ya Rasulullah, the companions, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, wa man ya'ba, who is the one in his right mind is going to refuse to enter Jannah? Who is the one who's going to say, I don't want to enter Jannah? The Messenger then said, 
Man ata'ani, anyone who obeys me. دخل الجنة, he will enter Jannah. وَمَنْ عَصَانِي And anyone who disobeys me فَقَدْ أَبَى He's the one who refused. If you obey me, you enter Jannah. If you disobey me, you are the one who refused to enter Jannah. You're refusing yourself. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to be obeyed. As Allah said in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 64, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا I have not sent down مِنْ رَسُولٍ A messenger. I have not sent down any messenger whatsoever إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Except that they should be obeyed. <coughs> so prophets were sent to be obeyed. And the obedience of prophets and listening to them the path to paradise is connected to it. So all of these textual evidences which I've provided you with, they show you what? That Allah wa ta'ala lam yatrukil khalqa wa sha'nahum Allah did not leave you with your own affairs. And you really commonly hear today people say, let me be. Let me be how I want. Allah hasn't left you to let you be how you want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created you to be a way He designed for you to be. A way in which He created for you to be. Allah wants you to be the way He sent His messenger who commanded you, commanded you to be in a particular way. Allah wa ta'ala wants from you to follow the guidance of that Prophet and his teachings. And anybody who's looking for salvation and prosperity and success, there is no way to gain prosperity, success, salvation, except through the path in which that Prophet had paved. And that path is one. It is not بِطُرُقٍ mutaaddida. It is not many different paths that one takes in order to reach success or prosperity or salvation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide me onto the straight path. Not paths, but paths. فَهُوَ صِرَاطٌ وَاحِدٌ It's only one path. The path of guidance is only one. There are surut ukhra, which is the plural of sirat, surut. There are many other paths that are deviated. Naam. Surut which are ahlu dalali wal jahal wal ghiwayati wal hawa. The path of the people of misguidance and ignorance and desires. As for the path that would lead you to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, there's no way to get to it except through the path of the messengers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Inna Dina Indallahi al Islam. The religion to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is, is Al Islam. The only religion which Allah considers and accepts is Islam. And we all know Islam is it is to surrender. It is to surrender to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala in oneness. And it is to follow him in obedience. And it is also to free yourself from shirk and his people. So Obedience is found in you. Full, complete obedience. My beloved brothers and sisters, the A'imah to Salaf, they used to say, لَيْسَ الشَّأْنُ أَن تُحِبَّ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّأْنَ أَن تُحَبَّ The matter is not that you, are, you love, but the truth of the matter is that you are loved in return. And what they are referring to here is 
قل ان كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم if you love allah tabarak wa ta'ala then fattabi'uni the prophet said follow me ta'atan in obedience yuhibbukum allah allah will love you so if i now ask you what is the path sabilu mahabbatillah the path in which allah is going to love you if i now ask you how will you gain the love of allah what's the answer fattabi'uni follow the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam Following the Prophet is the path to Allah loving you. <coughs> وَلِذَلِكَ ابْنُ الْقَيِّمِ He says in his Nuniya فَلِوَاحِدٍ كُنْ وَاحِدًا فِي وَاحِدٍ أَعْنِي سَبِيلَ الْحَقِّ وَالْإِمَانِ فَلِوَاحِدٍ For Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala alone and no, no one else. كُنْ وَاحِدًا Be one in your intention In your drive, in your motive, in your intention في واحد in the path which you're taking أعني I mean by that سبيل الحق والإيمان The path of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام فلواحد كُنْ وَاحِدًا في واحد أعني سبيل الحق والإيمان The first واحد is for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. For Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala besides anything else. Kun wahidan you be one fi qasdika wa iradatika. The intention and the drive and your motive. All of it be for what? Wa tawajjuhika. And the way you direct yourself. Wa talabika. And the thing that you're requesting. Let it be for who? Allah alone. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Fi wahidin in one path. On the straight path. He explains it for you. I mean by that. The path of truth and iman. Referring to as the path of the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Then the author rahimahullah. He brings a evidence for that which he has mentioned. Which is qawluhu ta'ala. The statement of Allah. Inna arsalna ilaykum rasoola. شاهدا عليكم كما أرسلنا إلى فرعون رسولا فعصى فرعون الرسول فأخذناه أخذا وبيلا الله says إنا أرسلنا إليكم verily we have sent to you الله is talking to who you لكن إليكم to you who is the مخاطبة who is this كم Happening to who's Allah addressing here? The khitab here is to kuffar of Quraysh, but it's not for them only, it is sa'irun nasi all of us. Allah sent to us what Rasul and a messenger, shahidan alaykum that's a witness against you. What does he mean, a witness against you? He's a witness on every action which you come with. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ayah 78 in Surah Al-Hajj, لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ وَتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ So the messenger can be a witness unto you. And you can be witnesses upon the people. كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا We have... The first part Allah says, we have sent unto you a messenger. Kama, like we have, arsalna ila fir'awna rasula. Like we sent down fir'awn a messenger. The messenger that was sent to fir'awn is who? Musa alayhi salatu wassalam. <coughs> Why didn't Allah mention it was Musa? لأنه معلوم غني عن البيان. موسى is known and there's no need to mention it. As Imam Al-Alusi mentions in his kitab, روح المعاني. There was no need to explain or to say Nabi Allah موسى was the one referred to here. Because Musa's story is the most mentioned story in the Quran.
فعصى فرعون الرسول فأخذناه أخذا وبيلا فرعون disobeyed the messenger فرعون he disobeyed the messenger we sent to him. فأخذناه we grabbed him Allah says. أخذا أي grabbing وبيلا the word وأصل الوبيل في اللغة وبيل originally in the Arabic language is something that is ثقيل شديد something that's heavy and this is also transmitted from Abdullah ibn Abbas as well that meaning and Imam al-Bukhari brings it in his Sahih Mu'allaqan Bukhari brings it Mu'allaqan Ibn Jarir al-Tabari brings it Mawsulan with the connected chain من طريق علي بن أبي طلحة عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما also Abi Ubaidah he brings it in his Majaz al Quran. <coughs> the Arabs they say, Kala'u wabil, wa ta'amun wabil. The Arabs they use it in those meanings. We will conclude there, inshallah ta'ala, for today's class. Anything which I have said that was wrong, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ